and what now? Good morning, viewers. For about two weeks now, on various fan pages dedicated to insects and in the private messages you send me, of which there are a lot, there have been questions and photos of the same large black insect. And if you have a barbecue or a campfire on your plot near the forest, its loud buzzing and rather frightening appearance can cause quite a stir. Meet a certain beetle who, despite its menacing appearance and rather loud lifestyle, is actually relatively harmless. This is Delash Garbash. My dear friends, I'm recording this video now in the second half of July for a reason, because it's around this time that the peak appearance of Dilaj Garbars occurs. What is this anyway? It just so happens that Kajishek, who is one of my viewers, sent me a package, which I picked up today, and inside there's something like this. Some might question why I didn't venture into the forest to search for this beetle myself, as it would be a more authentic and natural experience. The truth is that here in Lower Silesia around Rotswap, it's actually pretty hard to find them. Seriously, where I come from, which is Belkatov, I come across these beetles regularly, and there are just a lot of them there. But here, I just seem to have bad luck with them, and there just aren't any of these beetles here. That's why I decided that we'll do it this way. My friend is attempting to escape. I'll accept the package with him inside and make a video about it. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, that's right. Oh, here he comes, he's already stomping. Thanks for watching. Listen, now, 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 we're not flying anymore. Now, 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 I know you like to fly. Shit. All right, here it is. Come here. But that bastard really took off. So as you can see, I have one here that's giving me a beautiful air show. Oh no, shit. Either I'll put him in some kind of box, or I don't know, because this guy really got wild. And what now? No! Alright, 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 I'm done. Alright, listen, I managed to tame him in time for the recording. He'll stay in this container, because I still need to record his macro later. My dear friends, this is the Dilonge Garbage. I'm recording this video due to the numerous sightings of this species reported on various websites. A lot of people encounter it, they post photos asking what it is, because these beetles are relatively large for Polish entomofauna, and they are actually some of our biggest, most massive and most impressive representatives of beetles. Specifically, beetles from the longhorn beetle family. The species Prionus coriarius, also known as Dilunge garbash, is a longhorn beetle belonging to the Cerambicidae family. This is a family that includes about 200 species in Poland, and this is one of our largest ones. While this beetle is large, it's not the largest. It's surpassed by others like the great Capricorn beetle or its close relative, the Timberman beetle Irgates Faber, which inhabits pine forests. And specifically in certain areas of Poland, such as the Białowieża forest. In the Białowieża forest, I came across Dilonja at nearly every turn, as they are abundant there. In some regions of Poland, it is quite common and people simply come across it often. And because of its size, huge mandibles and those serrated characteristic antennae, people often wonder what it even is, whether something like that really lives here. Yes, it does live here and it's quite common. There are fewer of them in some regions of Poland, such as Lower Silesia. I haven't noticed there being a lot of them. They probably do occur here, but you just have to look for them a bit longer. And Dilaj Garbash is a beetle that becomes active in the evening. And most of the observations come from the evening hours, because that's when these individuals, as you just saw a moment ago, it's evening now as I'm recording this, are flying. They are fully capable of flying, both males and females, and they fly in search of a mate, a partner for reproduction. And an interesting fact is that in the entomological community, Dilosh Garbash is considered a marker of the end of the appearance of beetles from the Longhorn family. 
Because it's a species that appears rather late, usually at the end of summer, the vast majority of those roughly 200 longhorn beetle species show up in April, May and June, so mostly in spring and early summer. But Dilonge garbage is almost the last species, and it signals the end of the season. As for this particular specimen, it's a male. How do I know that? Mainly from its appearance. In beetles from the longhorn beetle family and the Prionini subfamily, which includes Diloge garbage and some of the world's largest beetle species, there is significant sexual dimorphism. In Diloge garbage, this is shown by the fact that, for example, the female is much larger, much thicker, and drags behind her a huge abdomen, at the end of which there is an ovipositor. Beetles can also have an ovipositor, an organ females use to lay eggs in tree bark crevices. Females also differ from males in their antennae structure, in addition to body size. Because here we come to such an absurdity that male Dilongia, that is exactly the specimen I have here, have very serrated antennae and they have 12 segments. Females, on the other hand, have much less serrated antennae and they have 11 segments, which is one less. So there are a few differences here and really, if we put a male and a female side by side, it's very easy to tell which is which. And now, why do these beetles cause us such fear and anxiety? Well, aside from their size, because as I said, this is one of our largest beetles and compared to other beetles here, it really makes quite an impression. Don't you even think about flying away, you? Exactly, and now it's about to fly away. I think that besides the size, there are two other features here. And both of these features are connected to making sounds. I'll try to show you this. So will you yell at me a little? Okay, you could hear it. Did you hear that creaky sound? This is a defensive technique used not only by stag beetles, but by many species of beetles in this family. This is called stridulation, the ability to produce defensive sounds. And in stag beetles, it works like this. They rub the pronotum against the mesonotum, which are two parts of the thorax. And in this way, thanks to the surface structure of these elements, they produce this kind of screeching sound. The second sound beetles make is the buzzing heard during flight. As you saw when the little rascal climbed onto the box and tried to escape, the flight is very loud. In fact, for most large beetles, the flight is simply loud because they have to lift their bodies and flap their second pair of wings, which are adapted for flying, producing this kind of sound. And there's one more thing, because someone might ask, okay, but is such a big beetle dangerous to us in any way? The answer is no, because it's not poisonous or toxic in any way. If it flew into your eye, it would hurt, obviously. But probably the most important defense tactic besides making sounds and running away is having rather large and very sharp mandibles. In general, beetles from the Prionine subfamily, in Polish I would say these are Dylonge beetles. I think such a Polish name would catch on. These are beetles that are very heavily armored, and one of their most recognizable features among all other beetles from the Cerambicidae family is having sharp mandibles, often armed with teeth. Additionally, some species have incredibly sculpted pronotums, and there can be various hooks and different spikes there. In the case of the Pronus coriarius, the pronotum on both sides is equipped with three sharp spikes, and that's also how you can recognize that you are dealing with this particular species. However, if we take a closer look at the head of such a Prionus coriarius, we can see exactly that it has something it can use to bite us. What I'm holding here is not a particularly huge male yet, but if it bites me, we'll see what happens. Will it hurt? Ow, ow. Okay, it's not bad, but larger representatives of this species, like big females or big males, can bite hard enough to draw blood. I'm not joking, as I've unfortunately experienced this myself. I chose to let a longhorn beetle bite me out of curiosity, which left two holes in my finger. Beetles from this subfamily are very strong, and for the longhorn beetle, it's not that bad yet. However, if we take it a step further and, for example, go to French Guiana, or generally to South America, there we can find beetles whose grip is so strong that, first of all, it can cut through our skin and reach the bone. There are also stories, for example, about what is supposedly the largest beetle in the world, Titanus giganteus, the giant titan beetle, that this beetle is so strong it could break a pencil. These stories are unconfirmed, but I believe them since being bitten by this beetle must be incredibly painful. As for their development, actually, Dilazae are representatives of the longhorn beetle family, whose larvae bore into wood or decaying wood. And usually it's decaying wood from deciduous trees, less often from conifers, while the larvae, which are white yellow in color and characteristically widened toward the front, are actually larger than the beetle itself. 
It's also amazing that with longhorn beetles, the larva can be this big, and from it such a beetle will grow. And that's just the analogy. So if we find such a larva, for example, somewhere in the wood which is burrowing, we can't be sure that it's a Prionus coriarius, but if it's that size, there's a good chance it is. And then, after the feeding period in the wood, which can last even up to three years, the larva finds a suitable place underground where it creates chambers to pupate, and then, around June or July, a new Prionus emerges. So, to sum up, if you find such a little guy somewhere on the sidewalk or in the forest, then... Aha, uh -huh. so please don't kill it, because they basically don't harm anyone. I know they might seem scary because of their size, but they're not our enemies, and in my opinion, they're just beautiful little beetles. I love, for example, uh, it's sitting on my lamp right now, and I don't know how to get it down. Jesus. No! I love how their shells resemble leather, giving these beetles an overall leathery appearance. It's something beautiful. Let me know if you learned anything interesting about this species, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!